Hi everyone, it's Lucy from My Crazy Craft Life and today I'm here with a design team post for Scrapping for Less. Today I'm going to be making this fun dual tower fun fold card. And the card is from Sam Calcut from Mixed Up Craft. She made a different sized card, a 5x7, but pretty much I use the exact same thing. I just changed up the measurements to make an A2 size card. So this is going to be four and a quarter by five and a half. So you're going to start out with an eight and a quarter by five and a half inch for the card base. The cover strips that you're going to be using are two and an eighth by five and three eighths and seven eighths by five and three eighths and you'll need two of the 7 8 by 5 and 3 8 ones. And that's going to be for the back panel. And then 2 inches by 5 and 3 8 or I'm sorry, by 5 and a half. 5 and a quarter. Yeah, we'll get it there eventually. And then 5 8 by 5 and a quarter. Now, what I will say about this is if you want to just do the two inches by five and a quarter where you're taking it down a quarter of an inch that certainly works as well I just didn't want as much of the white showing and I wanted some more of the border showing so it really just depends on what you wanna do and how you want to make it but now take your card base and you're gonna score it at one inch two inches and three inches and you're doing this along the eight and a, half, eight and a quarter inch side and then you're going to score it at five and a quarter, six and a quarter, and seven and a quarter. Or you can just flip it around and do it on the other side, one inch, two inch, and three inches. Now you will notice me cutting off a quarter of an inch here because I forgot to cut my card base down. And if you do the one inch, two inch, three inch, and just flip it around, you will not catch that. So you need to make sure that you know you have it the proper length if you're going to do that. Now take your folds and you're going to kind of have a larger area in the center that's two and a quarter inches wide and you're going to do a mountain fold for the, ver for the closest to the center and then a valley fold and then a mountain fold and you're going to do that on both sides. Mountain fold, valley fold, mountain fold with a larger area in the center. And that is your whole card base. Now, you see the area when you flip it over and you have kind of that flap that's doubled? You're going to measure a half an inch all the way down it. It's five and a half inches, so it's perfect to do a half an inch. And then you're just going to cut straight up to that line. So you're cutting through two pieces of paper that are connected. And you're going to do that on both sides where that flap is. So you still have the, the outside flap that's going to be straight and then the center that's going to be straight. Now you're going to go opposite, you know, in and out opposite when you flip these back and forth, but whichever way you start on one side, make sure you do it on the other side the same way. So then you're, if you started with the bottom piece going in, then that's how you're going to do that one. And then you just got to kind of work it a little bit to get it closed those first few times. You can use your bone folder to kind of flatten it down and straighten it out a little bit. But once you get it done and once you kind of work it a little bit more, you don't really have the problem of them flipping back and forth or things like that. And it makes those two little towers kind of cool, huh? I thought it was cute. And it's super simple. And we all know I don't like to do a ton of measuring and stuff, so this is kind of perfect. So then you're just going to see me layering up my layers for the card base and then adding them to the card base. Then I'm going to use that chicken with the bubble gum from the Flavor of the Month card kit. And these papers I ch was picking from was the Rustic Watermelon from Scrapping for Less. And then, like I said, I'm going to use that chicken with the bubble gum. And the reason why I'm using it is, as part of the ephemera that came with the kit, there was a joke about why did the bubble gum cross the street or cross the road. And then the answer, it gives you an answer in a little, like, um, 
talk bubble. And I thought that was kind of funny because then it says because it was stuck to the bottom of the chicken's feet. I know, silly, but I thought it was cute and I just, that's why I wanted to use it because I wanted to use those and I thought it was perfect with the chicken blowing the bubble. So I cut out two circles with some nesting dies. One is three and a quarter and one is two and three quarters. So it's about a half an inch difference. And I'm just going to stamp with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink the image that I'm going to color up. And I'm going to get a few alcohol markers to color up that chicken and the bubble gum. You can see I did not use a ton of colors. I used my warm grays just to do some highlighting on the chicken. The yellows I used for his feet because you can't even see the beak or anything like that and then that pink one for the bubble gum itself so I'm just going to color, color that up real quick and then I'm going to adhere it onto the circle now I did not pop any of this up I thought about it and I kind of went back and forth with it and I decided against it um, one thing you need to do is make sure that you do not adhere where the the towers kind of are where those um, back and forth that kind of grid is you gotta make sure you're not adhering anything onto that or that it's going to get onto those areas because it will then hold on to the card and not have it fold right so you want to make sure that you know you're measuring it out and you can put any size of thing on here as long as it's within the four and a quarter inches by the five and a half I mean, I don't think you would want to do that because it would cover up the towers, but it's going to fit in a normal A2 size envelope. So whatever you want to put on the front is fine. But again, you just want to make sure that you are not going to get any adhesive on those towers. So you want to make sure those stay clean. And then if you have any patterns on your pattern paper, make sure you line those up as well. The, um, what is that? The watermelon really wasn't a pattern that I had to worry about, but the background of the, the red circle had lines in it, and I wanted to make sure those were up and down. So you do want to make sure of that. Now this I actually took off and then I decided to do something different so I had used my embossing powder bag um, chalk powder to get the adhesive off of there and then change how I put that on there but that is pretty much it I'm gonna add some enamel dots to this and that about finishes up this card so thank you for joining me I hope everybody is staying healthy and happy and getting some time in there to craft. Check out some of these videos afterwards. I hope everybody has a great day. Take care. See you next time.